Hi, Stephen Hand from Staccata in Hobart. A few months ago, I published a paper called Will the Rule George Silver Please Stand Up? And a couple of people have said that they were a bit confused by the way I described uh, cutting mechanics, which I did in quite a lot of detail. I'll put a link to that paper uh, in the description below. And it's not surprising that people were a little bit confused because there's a fair bit going on in the cutting mechanics. It seems at first glance to be fairly simple, but there's a fair bit going on. Um, and I want to show you what is going on in Silver's cutting mechanics and how this is completely backed up by what Silver says. Now, if I cut from Silver's open fight, then I can really do that in two ways. I can lead, bring the whole sword forward as one and sort of come in with this sort of round arm, almost like a, a cricket bowling action. Uh, or I could bring the hand forward in more like a throwing action. And what happens when I, I bring the hand forward, as Silver actually tells you to do, um, is that the point remains behind and there's um, keep that thought in your head because there's a, there's a definite reason for that. Now let's just examine what will happen if I do attacks. Um, so initially let's, let's do an attack with a, a round arm action and see what opportunities um, my partner has against me. So initially he'll be an open, open fight as well. So if I attack with a round arm action, he can counter cut. If he's in true garden, And if he's in staccata, so if my arm can be targeted. So if I'm giving a big, I'm giving a big arm target when I come forward. So the way I can avoid that is by pushing the hand forward um, so that it ends up in front of my face. So what happens if Lewis tries those same defences, those same counter attacks? Uh, and they, they, they're all counter-attacks. Uh, Silver describes three ways of defending, and the first is to, he says, to strike at whatever part of him he does put within distance. So, strike and fly out. Okay, so if Lewis is in uh, open fight, so I can bind into his sword, I've got I'm giving, instead of giving a big arm target, I'm taking the arm target away very early in the action. If he's in garden, and you'll notice that my point ended up on line to him, so if he didn't then run away, I was in position to, to do a thrust at him. Okay, so a very silver principle that you're continually putting yourself in a position where you can hit the other person, maybe not a great chance of hitting them, but they've got no chance of hitting you. And lastly, if he's in, in staccata, again, I can just bind into his weapon. So, dropping the hand and leading with the hand certainly seems to defend myself as I come in. Now, does Silver mention defending himself? He, Silver says that you should come into the place in guard. So let's have a look at what I'm actually doing there. If I, if I come in, I'm, before I've even moved my foot, I'm, I'm coming in, pushing the hand forward. Okay. And if, if I sort of pause halfway through the action, right, what am, I, what am I in? I'm in essentially in a forehand ward. I'm essentially in what the later manuals called an outside guard. So I come through a guard position. So I've, I've come into the place guarded. And that's really important so that I don't get hit as I come in. Now Silver also says that it's really important uh, that he talks repeatedly about being able to deceive the other person's defence. He says, you know, don't do this defence, don't, don't parry garden from a low guard because you won't be sure which side of his blade 
uh, which side of your blade the opponent's it attack will be on. All right, so he's constantly alluding to uh, deceptions. Now, if I attack in this in this way, so any any way that you attack in silver has got to allow uh, you to do deceptions. So let's have a look at if Lewis is in staccata. Um, now, there's a couple of ways he could respond to. Let's first get get him to do something dumb. Let's get him to. Uh, completely ignore my attack and, and thrust at me. Now, if I attack in the proper way and he thrusts at me, I can just uh, bind into his sword. Right? And it gives me an advantage, his sword is lying spent. So that's a pretty dumb thing to do. Pretty dumb thing to do anyway. The best he could hope to get is a um, would be a double in that case. But People do that. People occasionally do dumb things. If I cut on this side, I, to Lewis's left, to his inside, uh, you're told to step circularly to the right and make a parry to the inside. So we're told to do something like this. Right. From there, obviously, Lewis could make a riposte. Now, if I have brought my hand forward early and I've left my, my, my point behind, I've got the opportunity to um, to move my sword rapidly in any direction I want to. Let's just have a look at, uh, I'm going to come in and launch my attack on this side and then deceive Lewis and go to the other side. So that when he starts making the defence, I'm going to go to the other side. First I'll do it with a, a, uh, a big round arm action. Where I'm leading with the with the whole sword and see how well that works. Now, as you can see, didn't really work at all. In fact, Lewis was waiting for me. His sword was stationary in guard for about a quarter of a second before my attack landed. So he had, in fencing terms, he had tons of time to defend himself. All right. Let's see if I do it with pushing the hand forward and leaving the point behind. So as you can see there, even though Lewis is faster than me, I was able to, he barely got a parry up and I was able to collapse it um, and get a bit, of a bit of a strike on it. So you could see a fairly stark difference. Now, um, it's been said by some people that uh, the sword, if I have to attack uh, by stepping in, then my sword can't be moving quickly. And hopefully, just having had a look at that, you can see that that's simply not the case. And I'll do that attack again, and you can see that while my sword might start slowly, at the business end of the action, it's going really fast. It's going as fast as it, it can. And that's because if you fence in true times, if you, if, you're, uh, if you follow Silver's instruction whatsoever is done with the hand before the foot or feet is true fight, uh, then your, the speed of your hand is not tied to the speed of your foot. Right? Initially, your hand is moving at the same speed of your foot, but it's not tied to the speed of your foot. And you'll see that at the end of the action, it's moving considerably quicker. All right? So, let's have a look at this. I'll do that same action again, and I want you to see how fast my, um, my weapon is moving at the end of the action. And I'll do another one. If, if Lewis just stands in garden, just come in a tiny bit, and um, I'm just going to do a full-blooded cut. Now, he knows exactly he's got protection there. Um, so I'm just, going to, I'm just going to cut, and I'll, as you'll see, I'll start slowly, but in quickly. In actual fact, I don't want to um, make the first part of my action too quick. Um, Napoleon had a great quote. He said, never, never interrupt your enemy while he's making a mistake. 
Um, and what that means is that if I start to make an action, I want my opponent to see it. I want them to react to it. And if I go too fast, uh, that'll mean I start to change my action, I start to mutate my action too early, and they have a chance to see what my final action is too early, and they won't make the mistake. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a mistake because he doesn't know that I'm not doing a direct attack. I could be doing a direct attack, and then if he doesn't go to parry, then he's going to get hit. All right? So, I create the threat... So if I, I'll go in now really, 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 really quickly and try to deceive him. Tons of time, because I'd overcommitted my hand, okay? I want to do enough that he feels like there's a threat, but not enough that he, um, not enough that it slows my, the second part of my action down. Okay, so I'm giving him something that he has to deal with, right? If he's convinced that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing this, um, and he just and he goes a bit slack on his parry, what happens? I'm just going to blast through his parry. Sort of got a parry there right at the end. Okay, but I'm going to be able to blast through his parry, and I'm going to be able to get an, get an advantage in that way. So Lewis has to parry, and if he doesn't, he gets hit. If he does, he creates an opening for me to hit him somewhere else because I haven't committed my hand to attacking uh, in any one particular line. Right? And I believe very strongly that, um, that the only way you can, you can explain all of the deceptions that Silver talks about, about things like why you don't come up and parry true garden from a um, from a guard like staccata it, that instruction makes no sense unless there are deceptions like I've just um, described there so what are the critical parts of an attack the critical parts are that the hand uh, must lead right that the whatsoever is done with the hand before the foot or feet is true fight so anything with the hand goes uh, in front of the foot or feet uh, is true fight. In doing so, I'm guarding myself. I'm not doing a round arm action. I'm pushing the hand forward. This fulfills Silver's instruction to come to the place, to come to the position where I can hit my opponent without uh, any, any additional foot movement. I've come to the place guarded. And in a very real sense, there are two parts of the attack. The, the first part of the attack is I come to the place guarded, I see what he's going to do, and then I complete my attack on the basis of what he actually, of what he actually does. Right? I see his reaction and react to his reaction. All right, so those are the key elements of attacking in Silver's system. Um, there is a little bit of complexity, but once you start doing it, it, it's incredibly natural. You just push the hand forward, and you can end up attacking in whatever line you desire um, quite easily. All right, so Silver's Mechanics of Attacking. Thanks for watching.